uh, if you take up material, substance, it's got a form, and to some extent the givenness that all the, the is sort of, uh, it's sort of contingent quality when you get hold of it never becomes a kind of active factor or very rarely becomes an active factor. You, one, one takes it that it's got um, a, a, a sort of neutral quality. And to some extent, um, I've come round, I think, in sort of, certainly in sort of thinking about what Caroline said, which sort of tingled off something in my mind, which was to do with um, the table operates as a as a, um, a mark of a given state, you know, like right. where you began. Yeah. It's not to do with making a sculpture which reveals tableness, but uh, to simply plotting your place when you make sculpture. That there isn't, you know, miraculous stuff that comes down from heaven which you take up and make this beautiful sculpture with. There's always a place where you go and get it, or whatever, and it's always got a form. And so that whatever you make has to take into account yeah. that given state. And to some extent, the, the table's uh, beginning is to do more with that, which is a given rather than revealing a table-ness. Well, it, 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 it is in the act. I, I, I can accept that as a viewpoint. It seems yeah. quite legitimate. I can yeah. accept it. Yeah, I think, I, mean, I think that's true. I think that is the case in, in, in the outcome. I think that is what we have here. But in a sense, that seems to be, to me, an aspect of the, the sense in which the outcome is unsatisfactory. That the, when one looks at the photographs, one is inevitably, I think, involved in this disintegration and metamorphosis of this particular object, which one classifies as a table. I mean, the discussion about what entitles a physical object to reside under the title of table is something that you know is crucial and is important and which we could go on with for a long time. I mean, in a sense, I don't think it's central to looking at what we have here, but it is central to looking through the first part of the photographs, or it appears to be. I mean, I'm not sure that it is, in fact, because the system by which the table was dismantled was arbitrarily imposed upon it without regard to its quality as a table. It seems to have been sliced up like a piece of bacon. No, I don't agree with that. Because uh, it wasn't sliced up go, um, mm. vertically, it was sliced up uh, um, at an angle, which took, took in the, the fact that there were joints at various kind of um, points of the wood. I mean, you wouldn't get it's been um, sliced out in a very particular one. So yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I would, I would think that um, the, the continuing stages are like strategies for continuing you know, to produce a certain kind of material. I, I agree with what Caroline said. But it's also true that the means for doing so are extremely limited. To source, almost always uh, certain kinds of cuts, oblique cuts. So I would, I would imagine that that enabled you to produce something which had the appearance of a fragment, something which had a, a sort of like a, a fragmentary appearance, and also perhaps if you looked at it in a certain way, a wholeness as well. It's something which offered you something which was unfamiliar, but of a certain a certain type of it. It was unfamiliar because it was recognised all as as fragment, although you might not be able to say it was a fragment. I think that, therefore, that um, it's, it's interesting that although I think their strategies, in a sense, are continuing, the extent of the strategy is continuing, and that it's not taken as something which needs to be gone into in depth. I mean, when, when a stage is reached, it seems to be changed, and I think that gives a, a, a character of various arrangements. Which I find a very Nevertheless, the, the procedures of cutting, which are very, very determined, very a limited means of continuing, not using drills or making holes, but slicing, uh, does tend to produce does produce certain kinds of. Uh, what we cut 
stop, which allows you, in a sense, I think it allows you to, to, to still regard it as fragment of table, which also fragment as material. Right. Mm, and I'm unsure when it's displayed in the final form, and what I was trying to get at very badly <laughs> in the final thing here, whether what's being shown is like display of fragment as table or sculpture as assemblage of fragments. That's the central issue. Yes, that's, that's what I'm... That's, I'm can, I, can I come back on this? I mean, on my remark about the cutting up of the table. I mean, I agree that the table's been cut up in a very particular way. But I mean, in a sense, what has been applied to it is a, a, a predetermined system. That the cutting up of the table has been quite unlike carving, making a carving. It's not like taking a piece of wood at the table and carving it to make a sculpture from it, to turn it into something else. It, in a sense, okay, a system has been applied for, for, for fragmenting it, um, which is peculiar. But, but it's carried through regardless, it seems, of attention to the identity of the emerging object. Is it still the table? Is it not still the table? Um, and how close can I get to that point when it is and isn't? You know, and in a sense, but it seems that that is what is proposed in the third place. It seems that that is what is going on, but I don't think that is really what is going on because and it seems to me that the intention to dismantle the whole table seems to be implicit in the beginning. That, that there never really was a struggle. Shall I stop? Shall I stop? Shall I take up the chisel? Shall I take up the chisel? So, that that was, was, in a sense, decided in advance, and therefore the issue of table, not table, was also decided in that sense. Difficult to know whether the imaginative act is centered on the arrangement or the cut. Uh, to some extent, um, I can't help thinking about um, Tony Cairo's sculptures of the kind he did um, when he first got hold of large steel girders. Um, getting hold of steel girders in the way in which he did it, establishes the givenness of it. Yeah. Um, furthermore, they were also sort of cut in a way which related to the givenness of them. They were not cut in a kind of so-called imaginative way. They were not sliced vertically, um, uh, diagonally. They were cut matter-of-factly, so to speak. It was part of the givenness. They were sort of industrial vertical cuts Okay, then, then the sort of imaginative fact was focused on the way in which these were sort of piled up. Or I was thinking particularly of that green one, uh, the yellow one, which I think was one of the best ones. Uh, the yellow one, a large kind of girder which is uh, propped up at one end with about three pieces which sort of uh, go down it. They're sort of tilted. Sure. Yeah, that's the initial. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, uh, there the givenness is very separate, and the imaginative sort of act, so to speak, if one can sort of slice it up like that, is established. And it's the, and it's the play, so to speak, against the um, mundaneness of the givenness, the material, plus the, uh, the form it's in, this cut. Uh, with the, in this case, the kind of poise, which for me, that kind of opposition uh, provides at least one aspect of the uh, sort of potency of the thing. I'm a bit um, confused, I think, when I look at this, because the, the system, as you sort of talked about it, the, the decision to cut, can produce in itself a, a th um, a shape which has got a, a kind of imaginative potency of its own. Mm. So you get a kind of blurring of that kind of polarity. Mm. That's right. I mean, I think that, that is very much the case. That, I mean, what earlier on I, I kind of referred to these elements, 
you know, as, as somehow that in the end, each one being cherished as something in its own right. And that seems to be ultimately what comes over. Yeah, I've come hot foot from seeing um, that um, those four wooden sculptures of, t of um, Tucker that, that show. Um, and there you've got a chair. And the chair is uh, sort of cut up. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> a cut up chair. <laughs> I thought about bringing it. I thought about bringing it. I made mine two years ago. After all. Well, I mean, it, 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 the, the cut up chair fits in very much, I think, with that um, the wooden framework sculpture that Tucker showed in the um, gallery in Bond Street, what was it, the Kasman Gallery, where he had um, something I imagine he found at the bottom of his garden, what was it, a kind of wooden frame or something, which he chopped up. Clothes horse. Clothes horse or something like yeah. that. And, he, and, he, and then the same kind of qualities are um, evident, as I was referring to in the, in the car, I think. But in this wooden thing, this chair, the chair, it's very clear, it's, it's clear, uh, to some extent I think the, um, the same criticism could be sort of levelled at that in as far as there's a very sort of tasteful, imaginative little cut, you know, the chair retains its identity very distinctly, you can see it's a chair all the time, and it's all, as Caroline I think so rightly said, browned over and made look like one of those sort of ethnographic objects from museum. Uh, but nevertheless, I think the ordinariness of the cut is, is more emphatic and more related to the givenness of the chair. So the imaginative assembly is, is you're free to relate to that. But that would be in keeping with your statement about, uh, in keeping with Karen's statement as well, about the uh, revealing or, or being able to sort of um, get to a state with a certain amount of material. Now, not, I think, to do with, I think, not, not to do with any sort of investigation of the given, but to accept the given as a starting point. So I think Caroline was, Caroline was uh, embarked on a totally different sort of view, which, I mean, in being stated, enabled me to think of what I just said. Uh, and that's to say, uh, sometime or other, you can um, sort of operate on material in such a way as to um, make it engender in you assemblies or ways of handling things which are which you wouldn't you know get without it. I mean the the, the, the shapes that you produce um, are a kind of input to your imagination, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult to put it. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, there are three things going on here. But, um, they need clarification, I think. We have, um, on one hand, your example of Anthony Carrow's eye beam sculpture. Mm -hmm. We have the sculpture here, and Bill Tucker's uh, sculpture of a chair. Now, as I understand it, what you were doing was uh, associating Carrow's eye beams as given with Bill Tucker's chair as given, and me being the odd one out. Is that correct? No, I would think I was putting a kind of continuum with Caro there, uh, given the beam and the cut, Car uh, Tucker in the middle, and you, the givenness and um, simply the identity of the table, the cut being um, sort of bracketed under the kind of imaginative act, which is also to do with the assembly. Yes, all right. Yes, clear. Yes, but I think Tucker's chairs um, are also tastefully cut as well, but less so than yours. I, I see the degree thing. I think I see but it. I don't know whether it's less to I mean, it's differently tastefully cut. I mean, yours, is, yours has got the rigor of system to begin with, but it becomes very rapidly... Um, um, uh, the system doesn't seem to um, determine enough. I, I mean, that's the that's the bit I I was I would be interested in examining the way in which the system um, 
what, or rather putting it another way, the, the, the effects of the system on you. Because it's almost as if um, you produce for yourself, I presume, unknowns in as far as you operate this system. This oblique cut. Uh, what do you do with it? Well, you certainly produce um, sort of delectable assemblies. But assemblies, I think, which um, in a sense don't arise, I say this with a certain kind of tentativeness, uh, which I think don't arise out of the system sufficiently. It's almost as if uh, you've got this um, very uh, distinct and set aesthetic, which instantly you get those obliquely cut forms you say, ah, oh, this is good fodder for it, and you then produce these very attractive uh, assemblies. You see, the, the whole system uh, of photographs is being uh, of a consistent aesthetic. Well, there are two aspects. I mean, there's a consistent aesthetic. Well, there is an aesthetic which I imagine emerges in various ways. I mean, I, I think it was possible, I think, to, to uh, detect a number of um, methods of organization, which I was referring to as sort of serial, unitary, and conglomerate. I mean, obviously, they need sort of spelling out what, what, you do I, mean, what, what I mean by it, but um, uh, that's distinct from the presentation. And I mean, that's to do with the, with, um, the documentation. I mean, the documentation. The, um, the, the presentation of documentation seems to me to be predetermined. I don't mean that you knew what you were doing, but it's certainly related to a very well-established way of presenting things. <coughs> I think that that's a very interesting well, idea of, uh, to, to consider. I, mean, I don't know whether it's possible to consider. And it's a, I mean, you know, keep aside, because it is a completely different tack, I and mean, the, the sense in which the documentation and, and notion of presentation determine the activity. I mean, I, I'm okay, but I mean, I, there, was, there, there was a point in which I wanted to come back to Peter's um, uh, statements about it being um, glossy and, in a, in a sense, inappropriate um, a presentation. I mean, I'd like to know about that, but I, I first would like to know about your three categories of organization. Well, I'm thinking of, of there as a sort of serial organization. I was thinking of there as a sort of unitary, and I was thinking of further down there as a kind of conglomerate, you know, the sort of idea that, um, that you produce a, um, an assembly uh, which is complex enough to make you, um, well, if it's, if it's done well, uh, try and sort of sort your way through it, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, it sort of pertains to a kind of abstract expressionist conception of aesthetic, uh, an abstract expressionist aesthetic, really. Uh, piles of stuff, you know, piles of stuff, as distinct from things which are put out in it's a serial order. Hmm? Yes. And then uh, the idea that um, here, I mean, that, I, I mean, I was classifying those as a kind of unitary order, unitary, where in a certain sense a thing presented um, seems to um, uh, suggest or argue. Uh, the totality of experience of a thing like that from one appearance of it. Yes. How would you, um, having uh, made a comment on uh, presentation, how in fact is this presentation, um, what were the words you used, glossy, tasteful? Well, inappropriate to the process, I would have thought. I mean, that's what I'm... Well, but what are the objectives? The photographs? The photographs in this uh, context? 
the way in which they're arranged on uh, the sheets, the number on the sheets, what? I think the way in which they're arranged on the sheets, yeah. Um, How the would way. you arrange them? In, in a line, first to last? Well, I mean, you're really asking, you're really asking me to sort of redo it in five seconds. Well, I mean, I think there's a, there's a sense in which one has to have uh, a real criticism. I mean, you know, you've said something, you must have something in mind as well. I mean, of course, everything can be done better. We can all acknowledge that. Surely you have some um, real sense in which these are inadequate, and therefore a sense in which they could be made more adequate. Well, I mean, for example, in all cases, you, you seem to have got um, a view of it. It's like in front of me is the glass, and I'm looking at it, and I'm here looking at it, and I I want to I want to tell you uh, about the glass in in certain respect, and so I I describe it from where I am. But I mean, there are um, the process of um, dealing with that as a fragment of a table might uh, require that I shall become closer to it. I mean, that, that I shall not take all of it as a, uh, you know, in photographing it. But I might uh, require to uh, not deal with the shape of it, but I might deal with the texture of it. I might be concerned with the relationship between the, whatever, the weight of it. And, uh, you know, I might be concerned to deal with the way in which uh, uh, here's a fragment, and um, at the same time it it emerged from whatever it was cut from, so that to some extent I might need to superimpose the fragment on the the thing from which it was taken. Which I've done. Is it not true? Hey, no, no, no. Wait, 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 Richard. Sorry. I mean, which I've done. You you actually. There there, there are many occasions in which um, uh, there are checks, if you like. There are occasions where. I photograph the remnant of the table with the pieces uh, outside the camera shot. There are others in which I relate the pieces which have simply been cut off to the remnant. And there are still others where I simply arrange the pieces that have been cut off. I would never um, use the word clumsy in, uh, in this looking at this. It's all elegant. And in some respects, I would have thought that um, the experience of uh, dealing with these fragments and the way in which they're wrenched off a table would uh, produce a kind of a clumsiness, a kind of, uh, you know, a, a kind of um, inarticulateness. I mean, the, 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 this sort of element of elegance and nice presentation stands out. It never seems to me that the fragment being wrenched from the table presented you with something more than you could deal with. You always seem to be very capable of dealing with it. You've always got the cool camera photographing this shape as it came off the table. Yes, I know. It's almost as if the camera is, is, is there to find a defensive shield, isn't it? That's not, I'm sorry, we've gone off the point. Uh, we're talking about something quite separately. I mean, in terms of the content of the photographs, uh, I would agree with you. On many occasions, that is what has happened. We were beginning to talk about the actual presentation of the mounting of the photographs and the arrangement of the photographs, not in terms of their content. And I was a, what I was asking... Well, that comes out of it, doesn't it? I mean, that comes out of it. I mean... No, I mean, would you like me to sort of to step them up in a sort of, as if they were falling off the wall? Did it, did it never occur to you, for example, that the photographs might need to be a different size? Yes, of course it did. I mean, if you assume that any uh, decision taken like this is the first decision, you'd be very naive. And of course, there were several sizes uh, looked at before I, I took this one. Anyway. Could it be the exact size of negative? Should it be three times the size, twice the size? But I mean, should they all then be the same, more or less the same size? Yes, because I felt that the uh, that I wasn't evaluating uh, the the stages of the work while I was making it. I'd undertaken to go beyond any evaluation I made, 
And so I felt that if you made one thing bigger than another, it would assume impo importance, which it didn't have when I was cutting the uh, table up. So they all assume the same size of photograph. But that's, that's precisely the kind of thing that I think in the end one objects to, you know, is that, that throughout there is this kind of imposition of a logic which is quite removed from your genuine responses to what has happened. What do you mean by genuine responses? Well, one presumes, you know, that you were responding to what was happening, but at any stage you withdraw into the shelter, it seemed, of some kind of predetermined logic, of some setup that you've determined in advance. I, I, I certainly uh, have withdrawn into uh, the logic of, of uh, evaluation, not to, uh, I, I would assume, a logic of uh, the types of things which I could do en route. I don't, can you say that again? I said I, I've not um, taken any sort of um, stance on evaluating the stages when I was doing them. And therefore, I was able, in a, in a sense, to sort of be consistent with the types of arrangements um, um, that I made on, on route. That does lead to a terrific problem. I think, I think really, it's, 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 it's kind of cropping up in various guises around the floor, isn't it? I mean, it looks, it looks as if one should be able to, I, mean, I feel as if one should be able to read it. I feel as if you set out a kind of cartographic set of symbols in a curious kind of way and one demands of those kind of symbols at least consistency and I find that you know halfway down the, the, oh, leafing through the atlas so to speak that the symbols have changed their meaning a bit you know it's one is faced with that kind of oh you know quality and, and then it happens again and then it happens again now there's a there's a there's a level which that's that's intriguing and there's a, there's a there's another another level where one sort of parts company with it as a, as a sense of sensible activity and I find you know there's, there's an aspect of that about it um, I, I think is, is cropping up. You know, it's as if somebody, you know, one establishes that these are contour lines and lines, and they're at 50 foot intervals, and then all of a sudden, way, hey, you know, they're not anymore. You know, there's something else, and then something else again. Is that? that I, think know, that I think. I think. I think. There's no really selection. Can I just, there's no selection in this. None at all. Yes, of course there are. Of course there are. The, 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 oh. In the whole process, I mean. Yeah, I mean. In the all, all the photographs displayed here are the only ones you took. No. Ah. Well, I'm afraid your R is going to be sort of uh, whittled down to a little molehill. The photographs which I uh, rejected were ones which are out of focus or were repetitious of the views that I took. Nevertheless, all the stages... Repetitious? Repetitious in the sense that I took two views of one object because I thought the light was wrong. And when I looked at the contact prints, they were identical. So I had made a mistake. And nevertheless, each stage in the development of the sculpture is represented. There's no, there's, other than that uh, kind of selection, there's no selection whatever. None whatsoever. Everything is included. There are some, uh, as I'm sure you'll agree, some really decidedly bad stages, designy, predictable uh, stages, especially early on, which I would, I would personally, if, if you want me to evaluate it, would have uh, rejected. This rigor of, of uh, anti-selection extended to timing, did it? Uh, the timing wasn't determined in terms of a clock, but in terms of the cuts that were made. The no, checks, I... the, 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 if you feel like that, the sort of lines drawn across the musical notation were made by each cut. I, I did mean, a photograph after every cut was made. Yeah. And, and, then, and then some of them were arranged. Well, of course. Yeah. Yeah, the pieces that were cut off were, were arranged. Yeah. Arranged. And, and, and there was a time when you said, that's it, photograph it. Well, I had to do that. That's yeah, and, then, and, and, and some of the arrangements might extend for, say, 20 minutes and some three minutes. Uh, yes, I didn't time it. I had no clock. I see. Yeah. So there was some selection. The, the, the pace of the work was determined by the cuts that I made, not by any clock. But the arrangement, the judiciousness or otherwise of the arrangement. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, if a thing seemed extremely fruitful to pursue, I, I imagine that as the work became more fragmented, oh. the arrangements took longer in the sense that there were more options open to me. But I mean, we are seeing uh, photographs of arrangements which might have taken 10 minutes or might have taken an hour yeah. or even more. Yeah. So there was selection. Yes, of course.
Yeah. All the selections are shown. But I mean, some of the stages towards, for example, a photograph which took, say, an hour or even an hour and a half, were not photographed. You, you put something up and you stood back and said, I'm not photographing that. Uh, I'm going to photograph this. Yeah. What did you do? I photographed everything that I did. Yeah. You, it's, I mean, it's impossible. It's, it's impossible. Well, I mean, you, you didn't, you didn't, right. you didn't I mean, extend the rigor of anything. Of course, of course uh, uh, I mean, I'm not in it because I... I mean, it's no, I don't care whether you're in it. Yeah. I mean, of course, I mean, of course I'm not really looking at myself solving, I'm not looking at myself... It's a question of how you identify a thing. I mean, as soon as I began... Well, thing, I did. As soon as I began to arrange the pieces, and when I stopped, I photographed it. Whether I liked it or not, I photographed it. Oh, you did, so... At some stages, you could have been you could have been uh, arranging something for an hour and a half, and at the end of an hour and a half, you'd say, "Time's up. I don't like it. Well, I'm going to photograph." Yeah. No, 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 it sounds as though he right. determined how to arrange things, arranged them in that manner, and then photographed it, regardless of whether he liked them. How did you do it? I seemed to reach a stage uh, of arrangement which was uh, total, coherent in some way, which I disliked. I still photographed it. It is possible to use up, I think, all the fragments in some way that that's the last one. I'm not very keen on that. I will nevertheless record that fragment. Oh, but did you ever get to a stage of saying, that's absolutely appalling. I'm not going to photograph that. Of course. That. Really? I mean, first of all, that war, apart from the first... Well, thing, why did it take... Well, let me finish in my statement. First of all, that war, apart from this, the photographs of the table, I find very unsatisfactory. I did at the time. But why did it take you, on some occasions, uh, five minutes, and on some occasions, an hour and a half, to get to the stage where you were saying, that's appalling, but I'm going to photograph it? Simply that in some cases, there were more shapes to arrange. I'm, I'm interested. The number. Yes. Of course, the number. Hey, that must be evident from here. But I mean, uh, if, I had if I had 25 things, I could go 25 times, they would all be on the floor. Boom. Yes, I'm sure you could, Peter. That's not the way I work. That one I just said, well, I took it off, and you were out there all things that I have a very kind of uneasy feeling. The, I mean, in a sense, the frustration we experience in regard to recording this thing, having to stop the recording, having to stop discussions so the recording can take place, and the waiting we have to do at the beginning so certain things could be arranged, is, is a kind of metaphor for the situation we're in dealing with the work. There is this kind of continual other considerations which prevent us really getting on with the business in hand. There is some other consideration of which prevents us really giving our attention to, to what it is we came here to do. Yeah, I agree. So. <laughs> you were saying? Yeah, you were talking about storage. Storage, storage. storage. Yes. Um, okay, I wanted to know uh, in between the stages of trimming the table, uh, there are points when it's evident from the arrangement on the photographs that in order to proceed to the next stage, the elements arranged would have to be disarranged in order to get at the appropriate bit of the table, and that's the way it seems, might be untrue, uh, in order to get at the appropriate bit of the table to make the next cut, or series of cuts, as it were. So I wanted to know what happened uh, with the bits in between uh, cutting and how the storage is handled. Yes, I mean, uh, not only were the um, some parts put aside when I was cutting, some parts are evidently put aside while I'm photographing the, yeah. the remainder of the table when it's intact. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, early on, as far as I can recollect, I simply sort of brushed them aside in a disorganized fashion. But when, when I got uh, a fairly large number, I can't be precise on what number that was, I began to see them in groups, and I tended to put them aside in those groups. I see. 
Um, I mean, in a sense, I'm echoing Steve's point about change in um, the, though there is a kind of apparent rigor generated both from the photographs and seeing the wood, um, that in a sense the rigor kind of breaks down where um, you separate the bits out from the kind of body of table plus fragments uh, to take to make kind of separate arrangements uh, and uh, photograph those or photograph even individual objects as happens to blur. Uh, and that uh, in a sense confuses what would seem what would seem to be a kind of positive aspect of the work, uh, i.e. rigor and kind of application of the, the rule. Uh, and the kind of non-reflection, well, if given that kind of, uh, from the photographs one can read that certain the rules um, are in a certain extent, to a certain extent, flexible, uh, that that isn't particularly kind of reflected, uh, making and breaking the rule, which isn't particularly kind of reflected uh, in the, the work on the floor. No, I'm not sure, what, I mean, well, I, I think what I understand by your use of the word rigor is some sort of fidelity to the uh, source of the sculpture and to the procedure adopted at that source. Um, I proceed, even if it's on, uh, even if I'm wrong about that. I think later on in the work, uh, the, when the number of shapes uh, and the type of shape began to suggest something which was uh, different from, in fact, more exciting than the source, a different rigor took place. So that when I lost uh, um, the fact that the bits were parts of a table, and when the, the number of bits suggested that uh, perhaps, uh, for better or for worse, a sculptural object, then a new rigor took place. Uh, yes, but I also get the sense that, that, that uh, I mean, I agree that that does take place, but I also get the sense that uh, you, as it were, can pick up, uh, pick up that, and then, but uh, your underlying rules, kind of like uh, the simple rule, of kind of one one cut, uh, same width, uh, gives you something to kind of fall back on. Uh, having got to the stage where, uh, as you say. Um, your original rigor bro breaks down because uh, of uh, uh, something generated in the kind of part in what you've been making yeah. uh, allows you to sort of focus on uh, something else, uh, and that's picked up and kind of reflected in some photographs. But then it seems as if uh, it sort of falls back again to the stage before, as if. Uh, as if that was a, kind of a dead end, as it were. You're going along the road and you kind of see a, kind of, see a side road which looks uh, interesting, and you kind of go up the side road. But that, uh, the side road is in fact, uh, you, at some point you should turn back and come back to the kind of main road and you go along. Yeah. And these kind of diversions um, manifest themselves uh, in, the, in, the, in the work, uh, merely as kind of like, oh, oh, not merely. These, these diversions, uh, these, uh, this is not just uh, not diversions in the kind of series of photographs. And the, the issue of sort of uh, uh, embedding uh, changes in kind of rigor in the uh, ongoing work um, doesn't get taken up. But that's, I mean, nothing to add. Yes. yes. The system employ cuts across aesthetic habits, if one can have a thing called an aesthetic habit, which I suppose is a contradiction in terms, but I imagine you know what I mean. Um, a system employed rigorously um, generates material uh, for uh, aesthetic formulations which are uh, presumably innovative as far as one is concerned. Um, do you consider that 
this that you've done has produced that for you, has created that state for you. That state being? Well, um, new material for aesthetic manipulation. Yes. It has. Yes. Um, is, there a, is there a state or a stage which you could sort of point to which would sort of focus that? Yes, I could. Would you do that? between uh, one's behavior uh, as an innovator in the studio with something um, very precise and uh, limited at hand and one's behavior in a gallery with something very general in hand. Uh, I think they are innovative in the first sense. Uh, I think maybe one or two of them are innovative in the more general sculptural sense. But I think but, 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 I, but let me finish now. Well, you are continually interrupting. <laughs> but far less so. Now you may speak. <laughs> but I mean, I mean you, you you seem to kind of propose that the context within which you were viewing your activity changed in some way profoundly and dramatically between doing it in the studio and bringing it here and, and regarding it here. Yes. Could you say more about that? Well, could you say more about that secondary to the kind of outcomes which uh, seem to bear on the replies you just made there? I mean, I know it's a difficult one, but I mean, you, know, you pointed out you went straight to a particular card, right? And uh, see, you were, you were talking about this particular assembly is extending your repertoire, your sort of range. Um, it cut across and your own kind of aesthetic habits. It proposed a different kind of ordering possibility. Mm. Um, I mean, I don't know whether it's possible to talk more 
in detail about that, but if you could, I'd find that very helpful. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, I chose that one. In fact, quite a few people uh, who've come in, uh, I don't mean public, I mean other artists who've come in, have chosen that one. Glyn Williams from said that, that was the best thing I'd done in the gallery. I think... Um, Who's Glyn Williams, Williams, by the way? You get a woman. No, to his friends as a sculptor, I believe, is the answer to that. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's the first time I've made a carriage sculpture. Uh, I, without, I suppose, without being um, very conscious of it, I think I've resisted it to a point where it's become obsessive as a resistance. And uh, I enjoy <coughs> that. I do see lots of... Uh, Are you then suggesting that... Sorry, I'm interrupting. Yes. Uh, I do see lots of um, references to the way Caro sort of, uh, puts things against planes. To, I mean, I think he's, uh, as a sculptor, he's um, very acutely graphic, painterly. In Caro? Yes, in many of the things that he does, yes. The, um, I'm thinking precisely about uh, uh, the work that he had in Milan. The planes, which are more or less set at right angles to one another, which look very beautiful on television screen and photographs. I do wonder what they look like uh, uh, actually. Are you then proposing that this sort of elaborate procedure is a sort of circumlocutory method of apprenticing yourself? Oh, no. Oh, you know I'm not. That's a rhetorical question. You know, you know I'm not. Oh, you asked me to explain that, and I've done so. You I'm asking you to consider that, because I think that the implications of what you've said bear in on that so-called rhetorical question, because I think it's uh, extremely difficult to, um, so to speak, uh, apprentice oneself to um, sculpt a sculptor or a sculptural tradition, because it, it seems to um, be bearing in on us, on us that everything we do has, seems to have to sort of be playing virgin territory. And that inhibits us, so that in a certain sense you've got to go into this uh, sort of elaborate procedure in, or, in order to avail yourself of sort of techniques and methods of operation which uh, are for you precedents, which, uh, but which to adopt, which would, would sort of seemingly sort of belie your inventive and imaginative uh, sort of operation. Well, I think that that is symptomatic of the conversation this evening. Uh, uh, you asked me uh, for a statement about... It was a sympathetic question. Yes, no, I nevertheless, I, I do think that there's a real anxiety to, to, to jump in with both uh, feet, already clothed in big boots this evening. What I was going to go on to say was, I, I agree with that, yes, I've already sort of declared that I think that was a way in which I could release myself from my inhibitions to make public the fact that I admire Anthony Carroll. Yes, I was going to go on to say that I don't think that these nine photographs here, read these nine sheets of photographs, repeat or echo anybody's work. And if I could have got somewhere near to that in the object, I believe that sort of category of events displayed there would have, are not um, in any way uh, repetitive or uh, full of sculptural cliché. I right. wanted that sort of explicit um, revelation, this, as Garth has said, offering up of the shapes to be in the object. Now, I didn't succeed there, though I did attempt. So there, I if I may say so, so hard. I mean, it's there, if I may say so, Gareth, lies the anxiety in those last remarks of yours, not in mine. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong, uh, although I think it's immensely difficult to avowedly apprentice yourself to, and make use of uh, Etc. Etc. Of somebody, for example, like Cara, yeah. by any means, it's okay. very difficult to do so. The question is, I suppose, that what do you do about your public appearance at the time you are engaged in this apprenticeship? I don't. I, neither do I think there's anything about it wrong with it. Neither do I think that it should be embraced. I mean, go to Stockwell and see how people embrace it. You know, there, there's no virtue in that either. When I mean, what I uh, have done, not what I tried to do, because it happened is to both declare that I do have extraordinary influences and uh, desires to do with certain things, which I haven't been able to do in the past, and perhaps, just perhaps, to do something original. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know at the moment, because we haven't considered that in more detail as to whether that uh, 
you know, is, is, is shed if it's uh, no, of uh, course seen. Not. But th then let's consider it because we you get the line with right? But what I, what I was going on to say is, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that the the opposite of what I was proposing, uh, it, 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 you know, is sort of Stockwell, because I mean, I think that there, um, that kind of operation is creeping into the public eye uh, or into a public position under the coattails of something like Cohen. And you, you, I mean, in a, in a certain sense, uh, what we're talking about now is, is being public, uh, distinctly and definitely not under anybody's coattails, which is an impossibility. Yes. Um, uh, the question is, uh, in my mind, is to uh, how one deals with the, pe the, the problem of publicness in the situation of apprenticeship. Well, I mean, uh, I thought we, we'd said something about that. I mean, uh, to apprentice one sh oneself blindly or untotally is, is no. I, well, I wasn't saying that. that's not apprenticeship. That's. Uh, uh, I've forgotten the term, but this is a sort of hideous term. Which Plagiarism? Is, I don't mean, yeah. And also to, to assume that you can be entirely original is also uh, unacceptable. Mm. That's not possible. I think uh, to perhaps admit to both in one, one's working procedure is uh, the most honest thing one can do. I've not been able to admit to that before. Perhaps I've always aspired to that. Mm. But I, I mean, I would want myself to sort of look more intently at the one you pointed out in the first instance to um, to say whether, in fact, what was available in somebody like Cairo was now at your fingertips in order to manipulate. Oh, I'm half fisted, I'm sure. Well, it's not that I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that, that, that that isn't the case. It might well be the case. Um, <clears throat> but. Uh, I mean, it's worth examining if one is apprenticing oneself uh, rightly uh, to, to a president or person, uh, then one has to be um, presumably able to sort of possess oneself of the intrinsic and essential and valuable aspects of that person. And I mean, it would be worthwhile, I presume, uh, for you. Uh, if you did actually say that that was a, a way in which that kind of admiration and uh, could appear to you 